Good evening. Thanks for joining us on a busy Friday night. I'm Tom Yamas, in for David. We begin tonight with the grim surge and rising death toll of the coronavirus across the U.S. The U.S. reporting 186,000 new cases in just 24 hours. At the same time, Pfizer takes a major step closer to providing a vaccine for millions of Americans. The U.S. with now more than 253,000 lives lost, nearly 2,000 deaths in just one day. Hospitalizations on the rise in every state, a record high of nearly 80,000 patients. Pfizer formally requesting emergency use authorization for its vaccine. An FDA panel set to meet next month. Millions of doses could be available within 24 hours of FDA approval. Staggering images of long lines, millions rushing to get tested before Thanksgiving, people waiting for hours at Dodger Stadium in L.A., California with a new daily record of 13,000 cases, a curfew going into effect this weekend. And here in New York City, the mayor warning new restrictions may be unavoidable. ABC's Whit Johnson leads us off. Tonight, from coast to coast, long lines for testing, looming holiday restrictions, and a mounting death toll. Nearly 2,000 in 24 hours as the coronavirus spirals out of control. When you look at the number of infections that are going up, they're really breaking records in hospitalizations and numbers of infections per day. But today, the first vaccine nearing the finish line. Pfizer and its German partner, BioNTech, officially applying for FDA emergency use authorization. The government has already stockpiled 40 million doses from Pfizer and Moderna. If approved, the first round could be shipped out by mid-December. We've developed a very extensive plan. We're going to get it down to the states. The states are going to tell us exactly where they want it to be. Still, the immediate concern is Thanksgiving. The CDC urging Americans not to travel. Every day, new crackdowns. In California, an overnight curfew goes into effect this weekend for most of the state after its worst day of the pandemic. Over 13,000 new cases. New Jersey's largest city, Newark, issuing a 10-day stay-at-home advisory starting the day before Thanksgiving. We're asking everything to be shut down. You should be outside only if you're getting tested, only if you need groceries. And in New York City, the original epicenter of the crisis, the mayor warning it may close indoor dining, bars and gyms by early December. Hospitals buckling under the strain. Half of all states in the U.S. reporting massive staffing shortages. Nurses in New York City marching from a hospital to a nearby cemetery demanding more staffing and PPE. We are here today because we are sounding the alarm. We are about to face the second COVID crisis in the Bronx and we are not ready. In Indiana, respiratory therapist Amber Hodges has watched about 20 of her patients die from the virus. They crash so fast that you don't even have a time to really think about what you need to do. It's just easier to just to keep going than take a break for yourself than to let your patients suffer. Nurse Carrie Wegg nearly lost her own life to COVID. One of my coworkers got it and she died. She died. But Carrie got a second chance, receiving a double lung transplant. I'm hoping my message as a nurse who didn't expect any of this can get out there and bring it home to people who don't necessarily want to wear masks or want to isolate themselves or quarantine. This is real. And tonight, the FDA has just announced a public meeting about Pfizer's vaccine on December 10th. This is a chance for FDA scientists and public health officials, part of an independent advisory committee, to ask Pfizer questions about their vaccine and review the data. After that, they will make a recommendation about how to move forward.